This program is made possible by the members of the Church Street Baptist Church in Greensboro, North Carolina. Coming up this week on Unspeakable Joy with Pastor Tyler Galden. What happens to the mother who has a miscarriage? Is it like Planned Parenthood said and it's just a, a bundle of flesh? What happens to that seed as it meets that mother's seed but it does not fertilize or it does not grow past just a few tri uh, the first trimester? Is that what happens to that baby? What happens to the baby that's aborted? What happens to the mother that has a stillborn? What happens to that child that's two years old that's hit by a car? What happens to that four or five year old child that has leukemia and died? What happens to where is my baby? Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you, you are here in this building today and you have lost a child. I understand your heart is broken. I understand that your mind is weary. And so does God. David here has a baby. His wife has a baby. Doesn't that, women, doesn't that make you ill whenever your husband said, we're going to have a baby? And you look at him and say, I'm going to tell you something, Jack. I don't see you throwing up in the middle of the night. Last time I checked, I don't see you getting the size of an elephant over here. I mean, I, I'm the one carrying this baby. You're just along for the ride. Well, David and his wife uh, uh, Bathsheba are going to have a baby. And God sends Nathan the prophet because of their sin. God said, this child is not going to make it. This child is not going to survive. He is going to die as a punishment for your sin. you got to stop right there. Just because your baby died doesn't mean God's punishing you for something. You understand that when David's baby died, God specifically told him, your child is dying because of A. God didn't tell you your child's dying because of something you've done. Then the devil is just lying to you. And you've got to understand that the devil is a liar and the father of lies. There is a reason that child did not survive. And the reason that child did not survive may not always be known on this earth. You do understand that we spend forever and forever and forever in the presence of God and it is there we will learn the deep truths of what God was doing in this world and in this life. Here's what I want you to write down. There's four things I see in this passage. Number one, I see a sin. Verse 15, the Bible, it says this. It says, Nathan departed unto his house and the Lord struck the child. Watch this phrase. That Uriah's wife bare unto David. David was reminded the moment that that child died, the reason that baby died was because of S-I-N. I have heard people say this more times than I, than, I, than, I, than, I, than, I, than I care to think about. They say, but why do babies die? Why do children not grow in the womb? Why do they die? It is because of s i -N. In. It is not our sin. It is not their sin. But you've got to understand, flowing in that baby's womb, flowing in that baby's body is the corrupt sin of Adam, their father, and Eve, their mother. They have an inherited sin nature that came down through the bloodline. You remember I talked about that a couple of Sunday nights ago, that just because you are a human means that you are a sinner. You say, I don't like that. It doesn't matter if we like it. It is the fact. I don't like the 
fact that it takes me nine and a half hours to get to Jacksonville, but that's just the fact it takes me nine and a half hours to get to Jacksonville. Just because we do not like something doesn't mean that it changes the reality of that something. And the something that we've got to get used to is that in this life, in our children, even little Johnny that is so sweet and wonderful and just full of life, and man, grandma, you think he's wonderful. He comes in in that bow tie, and he just looks so pretty, and he's down in children's church. Can I tell you something? At the end of the day, little Johnny's the devil. Johnny's the devil. You say, how do you know? Because my kid's not named Johnny, but he is named Demoniac. We live in an alternate reality if we don't think that just because our kids are young that they are not sinners. And inside of the womb of that mother, that baby has an inheritance because of the blood of sinful Adam flowing. Here's the question. Mom, Dad, have you ever sinned? Well, yeah. Therefore, your blood is tainted. Where did that baby get their blood from? A tainted mom and dad. And God told us what would happen when we sin. Did he not? In the day that thou sinnest, thou shalt surely die. You say, I don't like it. I don't like it either. I don't like the fact that I've got to do funerals for babies. I don't like the fact that mothers have to go through pain. I don't like the fact that they suffer and are hurt. But the facts are the facts. Every time I do a funeral for a child, I'm reminded sin is in this world. It permeates this world. It corrupts this world. See, sin. I want you to notice something number two. I see sorrow. Verse 16, the Bible says, David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. I read a quote yesterday by a, 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 psychi- a psychologist. This lady's name is Dr. Joanne Cacciatore. It's what she said. She said, when a child dies, everything hurts. Every part of your mind, your body, your heart, your soul, every cell in your body aches from the tips of your hair to the bottom of your feet. Every cell inside of that mother's body, when that child is gone, it hurts. Ladies and gentlemen, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired of hearing super spiritual people and super spiritual preachers and super spiritual Christians come along when a lady is broken or a man is broken and there's sorrow and there's pain and they say, just get over it. It's going to be okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you can tell me till the cows come home that I'm okay and everything's going to be okay and I know everything's going to be okay. I know it's all going to work out great but that doesn't mean my heart is not broken in two and there's something about the hurt and loss of a child that crushes you from the tips of your hair to the sole of your feet David is laid on the earth David is laid on the ground broken and shattered Can I tell you what sorrow does? Sorrow softens. Sorrow wounds. The problem is if sorrow isn't dealt with, sorrow scars. And many people that lose children, they understand that sorrow softens. Hearts break and sorrow breaks and sorrow does. But they get to a point when they don't deal with the sorrow. And inside of their heart and mind, they are nothing but scarred, hard people. You say, I'm broken. My heart's broken. I got a verse for you. Hebrews 4.15. The Bible says, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched 
with the feeling of our infirmity. I was studying that this week on a different subject. And this is what the Jewish high priest, because of the laws and because of the strictness, you know something? That high priest, he could not share sorrow. He could not show sorrow. He could not go into the house of mourning. If there was a family member that died, he had to follow some way back from the, the funeral procession. He couldn't be near it. And if there was crying in his house, he had to leave. He could not show tears. And I believe inside of America and inside of the church, we've got people, we've got Christians... And they have this thing with showing sorrow and showing sympathy. Somebody cries, they have to leave the room. Somebody cries, they can't deal with it. Somebody cries and all they know to do is just pat them on the shoulder and say, everything's going to be okay. But can I say something? When I was going through sorrow and I was going through pain, nothing blessed me. Listen, I love it when people come up, put their arm around you and try to say something kind and try to say something wonderful. But I promise you, those were not the greatest times of comfort, the greatest times times of comfort when somebody that had walked through what I'd walked through and been what I'd been through walked in behind me, honey, and they put their arm around me and they didn't say a word. They put their arm around me and all they signaled with their body was I am here and I made it and everything is going to be okay. And they cried with me and they wept with me and they held me and they walked close by me. That's exactly what that verse means, great God and glory. Jesus said, I've walked where you walked. I felt what you felt. I've been where you've been. I've been broken like you've been broken. I've sorrowed like you sorrowed. And when the preacher can't help you, and when the deacons can't help you, and when the Sunday school teacher can't help you, and the choir can't bless you, because your heart, all of a sudden, a thrice holy God, good God in heaven walks into your room in the midnight hour of your sorrow, and in the midnight hour of your tears, walks into where you're at, puts his arm around you, and he says, honey, I've been where you're at. I've walked where you've walked. I've hurt like you've heard I've been there I've walked there and everything is going to be okay and he says I have been touched Amen. what does that mean I felt it yeah. I felt it preacher I am broken what do I do you sit still and wait for the arms of God to come near Sorrow. Number three, write this down. Number three, I see strength. I see strength. I see healing. I see restoration. Verse 20, the Bible says this, Then David arose from the earth, and he washed him. Now look, before I go, I'm going somewhere. I know y'all wonder. I thought you said, where's my baby? I'm going somewhere, but I got to take you where I'm getting you before I can get you where I'm going to take you. So just stay. We're going to go somewhere. Just, just hold on with me. He says this in verse 20. David arose, washed, and anointed himself, changed his apparel, and came into the house of God and worshipped. Then he came to his own house, and when he required, they set bread before him, and he did eat. David went back to a normal life. I know you won't tell anybody. I know you won't relate. But isn't that what every broken mother wants? I just want things to go back to normal. But how can they go back to normal when I'm so broken? David gives us four steps to strength. I want you to watch this. Number one, preacher, how, what do I do? Number one, David cleaned himself. Look in verse 20. The Bible says, Then David arose from the earth and he washed himself. He washed himself. He cleaned himself. You say, well, that's nice, Reverend. I took a shower this morning. I'm not talking about physical cleanliness. I'm talking about spiritual cleanliness. How many honest Baptists will get real with me this morning and say, when you go through sorrow, it is very easy to throw your hands up and say, I don't care. I just don't care. Go to church, don't go to church. Read my Bible, don't read my Bible. Act like that, I don't care. And we'll even go so far as to say, when I lived in the world, I didn't have these problems. So you know what you say? I'll go back to the world. But the first step on the way to getting strength again for a broken person is to keep yourself clean in the eyes of God. 
The worst thing you can do, Mom, is run back to the world. The worst thing you can do is put yourself back in that. The worst thing you can do is go back down yonder to the roadhouse or to the barber's house or to the, 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 the whatever it is down there. You go down there, get yourself drunk, get yourself high. Not only will God not let you get drunk and high, you won't enjoy it, and then you'll have the guilt of sin. The best thing you do is stay clean. You say, what does that do? Here's what it does. It keeps your eyes unfettered as you try to look for Jesus. You say, I can't find him. I know, you really won't find him. You put blinders on your eyes. You put mud back in your eyeballs, you really won't find him. He cleaned himself. Number two, watch what he did. He went from his house to God's house. He went from his house, verse 20 it says this, and he anointed himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord. You know what David said? David said, I've been around this mess long enough. I've been in my way long enough. I've been where the pain is long enough. I've got to get down yonder where God's at. I've got to go down yonder where God's people are. I've got to go down yonder where God's spirit is. I've got to get out of the way I'm doing it. I've got to get in the way God's doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you the one thing you've got to do whenever you get in this place? You've got to raise your hands up and say, God, I don't want my way. I don't understand why it's happening. I don't know why I'm going through it. I don't know why I'm facing it, but God, I lift my hands up. I take my hands off of it. I say, great God in heaven, please put me in your path. Put me in your way. Listen to me. Nothing easy about pain. I don't care if it's the loss of a baby, the loss of a marriage, the loss of a whatever. Nothing easy about pain. But the way you get out of pain is you go and you do things God's way. I want you to write down this third thing. I don't remember what the third thing was, Kim. What's the third thing? He turned his woe into worship. The Bible says he anoints himself, goes down to the house of the Lord, and he worshiped. Can I tell you something? I'm... Would you agree that I'm always honest with you and you're always honest with me? If we're not careful as prideful humans, we will turn our sorrow into a pill for which we want sympathy. Oh my, pull the counseling books out on us, Reverend. Here's what we do. We take our pain and we use it as a token if we're not careful by which we can derive Sympathy. So how do you keep from that? Here's what you do. You get yourself out of the way you're... And you say, God, here's my issue. Here's my pain. Here's my problem. I'm giving it to you. And do you know what happens when you lift your hands up? You've just turned your woe into... Worship. God, where are you? He said, I am near when you worship. Got all that? Got all that? Okay. Now, I want to take you to my fourth point here. Because I, 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 the whole thing, I sold you on where's the baby. I'm going to take you somewhere. Number one, I saw sin. Number two, I saw sorrow. Number three, I saw strength. Number four... I saw sureness. Now, watch this. Here's what got me. Here's what struck me on this whole thing. I see David, and David is sorrowing before the baby dies. But after the baby dies, no sorrow, no pain. Do I think he had sorrow? I do. But something overwhelmed David. What was it? Sureness. Watch this. When I go down to graves with babies and with children and with teenagers or whoever it is, I go down there, there is a difference in the sorrow whenever somebody has a mindset. When somebody's mindset is they're saying goodbye, they sorrow a certain way. There is a big difference when somebody says this is not goodbye, this is just good night. 
I promise you, I can mark it. Whenever I see somebody at a graveside, whether it's an old man, an old woman, a young man, a young woman, a teenager, a baby, whatever it is, when they've got the mindset, it's over, it's done, I'll never see them again, I'll never talk to them again, I'll never be where they're at again, there is a sorrow because there's a finality. It's over, it's done. But honey, there's a difference when a mama or a daddy or a child or somebody goes to a grave and they say, it's not goodbye, it is just good night. I will see you in the morning. I tell you right now, my little boy, he's as crazy as I am, and he can he will react different. Whenever I tell him, Nay's going bye-bye. Nay's leaving, she's going home, you're not going to see her for a couple. Oh, oh. Oh gosh. Oh, Jesus, come back and take him home. I mean, he's done. He has a meltdown. I mean, it doesn't matter if we're at La Bamba. It doesn't matter if we're at Chick-fil-A. He's in the floor. Then I have to turn into Godzilla. I stomp him. He stomps me. It's just an ugly situation. But when I say, nay's not going bye-bye, nay's got to go night-night. And we'll see her in the morning. You know what he'll say? Bye, nay. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Can I tell you something? The devil has lied to us as we look in that little casket, as we look at that little body, as we looked at that little memory of that little baby. Maybe you got to hold it in your arm. That devil said it's over. That devil said it's done. That devil said it's through. But honey, I've come to tell you based upon the authority of the Word of God and the God of heaven pumping in my soul, if that child, he dies, he has died, it is not goodbye. It is just good night. I will see you in the morning time. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no sorrow for the child of God because where that baby is I will be also so here is the whole message that was just my message here's my little Bible lesson you ready where's that baby at the short answer the baby is in heaven how do I know that well I've lost my Bible so I can't tell you here's what the Bible says about David David said this he said where he is I will go so wherever David planned on spending, spending forever is where that baby was. You remember in the book of Psalm chapter 23, verse number 6, the psalm of the shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The last verse of that, David says this, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Last phrase, and I will dwell in the where? House of the Lord, how long? forever the house of the Lord it is a it's a it's a type of heaven David said I'm gonna be in heaven forever so therefore David was saying about his little baby where I am he already is where I'm going he's already at preacher where's my baby simple he or she is in heaven. The question is, how do I know that? You can't just take a little story like this. There's got to be a, a, there's got to be a, a reason for that. Well, how do you get to heaven? By faith, through grace, in Jesus Christ alone, right? Yeah. You can't get to heaven any other way than in and through Christ Jesus. Now, you ready for your Bible lesson today? Get your pen out because you're gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm going to blow some of the things that many of you have heard all your entire lives. Okay? Number one, you've got to understand this. Understand this. The Lord cares deeply about children. The Lord cares deeply about children. If you remember Matthew chapter 18, Matthew 18, Jesus said, If you offend a child, one of these little ones, it would be better for you that a millstone, a rock tire, was wrapped around your neck and you'd be thrown into the deepest part of the ocean than for you to offend one child. And David said, God said in Matthew 19, Jesus said this in Matthew 19, verse 13 and 14, Then were there brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked him. But Jesus said, suffer little children. What does that mean? It means don't ever offend them from coming to me. Jesus loves the little children 
of the world. Mama, the only one that loves that baby more than you did is the Lamb of God that made him. Amen. So you've got to understand that. Number one, Jesus loves children very deeply. Number two, write this down. If a child goes to heaven, God's grace will be the one that makes a way. It is not because the child has sin or hasn't done enough sin. It has nothing to do with that. If the child is in heaven, it's because God's grace made the way. So here's the question. If Jesus loves children, would he not make a way for them to go to heaven? And that leads me to my third point. My third point is this. We've always been taught that you go to hell because you're a sinner. You do not go to hell because you're a sinner. You are condemned because you reject truth. You reject the truth of Jesus Christ. Now before you take your Baptist hat off, let me give you some verses on that. Here's what it says in Luke 10 verse 16. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. He that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. John 12 verse 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. 1 Thessalonians 4, 8. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God. Here's the point. Why does a person go to hell? They go to hell because they reject the amount of truth God has given to them. That's why a man or a woman goes to hell. In fact, Romans chapter 1 tells us that the man in Africa that's never heard the gospel, never heard it, he doesn't go to hell because he rejected Christ alone. He goes to hell because the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork, and that man decides to worship an idol instead of seeking out the true God that is the creator. So the point is, a baby doesn't have the opportunity to reject a child has never been given the opportunity to reject so somehow you say explain it I don't know I'm just telling you what the Bible says all I know is that God in his grace and God in his merciful atonement for sin Jesus' blood covered and washed away and paid the price for those babies. Now listen to me. I'm done. I'm through. I'm done. It doesn't... The question is not... Now hear me, hear me, hear me. The question is not where is the baby? The question I have for you is where are you? 